Welcome back, brothers, to part three of the video entitled Judgment According to the Bible, According to the Scriptures. Okay, now I'm going to pick up in, in the Apocrypha. In the Apocrypha, we're going to pick up in <clears throat> Ecclesiasticus in the Apocrypha. Chapter 11, verse 9. Ecclesiastica, Ecclesiasticus, chapter 11, verse 9. And it says, Strive not in a matter that, con that concerneth thee not, and sit not in judgment with sinners. So the scripture says, <clears throat> Don't strive in a matter that don't concern you, but don't sit in judgment with sinners. Because the thing is, brothers and sisters, you know, basically, you know, if, if you see, um, say, a, a brother that hates the Most High, you try to correct them before and they don't want to hear this. Don't sit in judgment with them. It's, that's what it's, it's talking about, that. But also, if you see brothers dealing with an issue that they're not into the truth and they're trying to give somebody advice, you don't sit in judgment with that either, brothers and sisters. It's twofold. Now, I'm going to show you why I said that if somebody that hates the Most High, that just reject these scriptures all the time, you know, you don't, you don't need to be correcting them. You don't have to because the blood is washed off your hands because you, 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 you reproved them before. Now let's go to Proverbs chapter 9, verse 8. Proverbs chapter 9, verse 8, to get that answer. Proverbs 9, verse 8 says, Reprove not a scorner, lest he hate thee. And that's why I said you don't sit in judgment with sinners. Because you don't reprove a scorner, a scorner, lest he hate you. So it says, Reprove not a scorner, lest he hate thee. Rebuke a wise man, and he will love thee. But if you rebuke a wise man, someone that's walking in the truth, in the law, statutes, statutes and commandments, in the faith of Jesus Christ, he will love you. So from there, let's go to um, Proverbs chapter 4, verse 19. Proverbs chapter 4, verse 19. <clears throat> the way of the wicked is as darkness. They know not at what they stumble. Because see... That, that wicked man, that, uh, that scorner, he don't know at what he stumbled at. If somebody is sincerely walking in truth, they will humble themselves. That's why I read in Micah chapter 6 verse 8 says, What's required of you to walk, to do justly, to love mercy, and to walk humbly with thy God. So if a humble brother, he don't fall into this. But it says in Proverbs 4, 19 says, The way of the wicked is as darkness. They know not at what they stumble. Because you might come to them and show them, they show them, reprove them, show them the correction according to the Bible, give them the medicine, but they are rejected. Because they don't know at what they stumble, brothers and sisters. So from there, <laughs> let's go now to um, e Ecclesiasticus in the Apocrypha. Ecclesiasticus chapter 32, <clears throat> verse 17. Ecclesiasticus chapter 32, verse 17. It says, A sinful man will not be reproved, but find it an excuse according to his will. So it says, A sinful man, he will not be reproved, but he find an excuse according to his will. Because you'll go to him and Say you got a brother that's, let's deal with a brother walking in the truth. And you come and show him, say, brother, nah, the scriptures say this. If the brother not walking humbly with the Most High, he'll make, he won't be reproved. He's going to make an excuse according to his will. Let me give an example of that. <clears throat> say um, Leviticus 19.27 says, you shall not round the corners of your head, right? And you tell the brothers, you can't shape up your head or tape your hair. And they tell you, that's not what that means. That means I just can't bald my head. But brothers and sisters, it the scriptures to saintly say you cannot round the corners of your head. So now they're going to come and show you, say, no, I'm not saying that. 
or it goes on to say you saw a mar the corners of your beard. They say, oh, that's cutting your beard, cutting your beard where it won't grow no more. See, they find an excuse according to they will because they want to keep taping up their hair or shaping their beard up. But the brothers, the brothers and sisters, scriptures say we can't do that. So it says in Ecclesiastes 32 verse 17 it says a sinful man will not be reproved but findeth an excuse according to his will. Okay, now from there, let's move on. I want to go to Ezekiel. Let's go to Ezekiel chapter 3. Ezekiel chapter 3. Verse 18. Ezekiel 3.18 says, when I say unto the wicked, Thou shalt surely die, if thou givest him not warning, nor speaketh to warn the wicked from his wicked way, to save his life, the same wicked man shall die in his iniquity, but his blood will I require at thine hand. So brothers and sisters, you know, and when I go out and teach on the Sabbath and so forth different days, these people don't understand that they need to keep the laws. But my job is to warn the wicked. And if I don't warn them, then it says that that wicked man will die, but his blood will be required at mine hand. Verse 19, it says, Yet if thou warn the wicked, and he turn not from his wickedness, nor from his wicked way, he shall die in his iniquity, but thou hast delivered thy soul. So the scripture saying we have to warn the wicked and then we'll deliver our souls. Now let's go on in the verse, <clears throat> verse 20. It says again, when a righteous man doeth turn from his righteousness. So now we're dealing with someone that knows the truth, walking in the Lord's statutes and commandments. So now it says again, e Ezekiel chapter 3, verse 20. <clears throat> again, when a righteous man doeth turn from his righteousness and commit iniquity, and I lay a stumbling block before him, he shall die because thou hast not given him warning. He shall die in his sin and shall not be remembered. I'm excuse me. He shall die because thou hast not given him warning, he shall die in his sin, and his righteousness which he hath done shall not be remembered. But his blood will I require at thine hand. So that wicked man will die, brothers and sisters. I mean, that's just, excuse me, we're dealing with a righteous man that know the truth. But it's tell you that the Most High put a stumbling block before this, this brother. So now he, he put it in your spirit to warn him. But if you don't warn him or me, it says that righteous man, all the righteousness he done won't be remembered. But he will die in his iniquity, his sin, but his blood will be required at our hands. Right? Verse 21. Nevertheless, if thou warn the righteous man that the righteous sin not, and he doeth not sin, he shall surely live, because he is warned, also thou hast delivered thy soul. So if we warn that righteous man, we deal with a righteous man now, if we warn that righteous man, and he turned from his, he turned from the sin, he repent, now brothers and sisters, we just saved two souls, ours and that righteous man that repented. So you see, now let me show you, I'm going to go and show you an example of Paul with this same instance right here. Dealing with both of them from Ezekiel chapter 3, 18 to 21. Okay, we're going to go in Acts. Acts chapter 20. Acts chapter 20, <clears throat> verse 25. And now, behold, I know that Ye all, among whom I have gone preaching the kingdom of God, shall see my face no more. So, it's just like we go out in the streets and teach the word, brothers and sisters. Some of them won't see our face no more. So, Paul is telling the Israelites and saying, And now, behold, ye that ye, I know that ye all, among whom I have gone preaching the kingdom of God, shall see my face no more. 
Wherefore, I take you to record this day that I am pure from the blood of all men. So see, he's saying the same thing Ezekiel said. He's saying, y'all won't see my face no more. But he said in verse 26, Wherefore, I take you to record this day that I am pure from the blood of all men. Verse 27, For I have not shunned to declare unto you all the counsel of God. So see, the same thing I read in Ezekiel chapter 3, verse 18 to 21, is what Paul is actually repeating, just in different words. So, <clears throat> from there, let's go to Job. Job chapter 32. The book of Job chapter 32, verse 9. Job 32, 9, verse 9. It says, Great men are not always wise, neither do the aged understand judgment. Now, see, why did I read that scripture? Because now I'm dealing with, say if we're in a congregation, and you see brothers in the congregation going off. Say, for instance, you don't keep birthdays, but they keep birthdays. Well, brothers, you are commanded to correct them, rebuke them. Because it's telling you that great men are not always wise. Neither do the age understand judgment. I mean, that's, that's twofold, because brothers in the street that's not into the truth they can be gray haired as they want if they're not keeping the law's statutes command, law's statutes commandment there's no wisdom in them and um so but just because you see a brother that's been in the truth longer don't mean that they necessarily wise because the most I might put a stumbling block before a brother or a sister in the truth and put it to you to warn that brother or sister so now that stumbling block can also become a stumbling block for me or you if we don't warn them. So from there, let's read Isaiah. Isaiah chapter 58, verse 1. Isaiah chapter 58, verse 1. It says, Cry aloud, spare not, lift up thy voice like a trumpet, and show my people their transgression. In the house of Jacob, their sin. So the sins. So the scripture says, "Cry aloud, spare not, and show my people their transgressions." Now, brothers and sisters, we read the scriptures when we go on the highways and byways and teach the word. And these are people that don't know to keep the laws, and we cry, we cry aloud, and we don't spare. And we show the people their sins, their transgressions, the Israelites. But that scripture didn't say just to do it to the, the wicked. Because if you have somebody in your congregation, if they erring, if they committing an error according to the scriptures, you're not the spirit. That's why I went over all those scriptures. Open rebuke is better than secret love. Those that sin rebuke before all. Ezekiel said about the wicked and the righteous, brothers and sisters. So we cry aloud, spare not. Lift up thy voice like a trumpet. So if somebody in the congregation going off, we are to correct them, brothers and sisters. But now, what I'm getting ready to do is go into another aspect of the lesson, because you don't just, we have to examine the matter, brothers and sisters. And it starts with examining yourself before anything. You examine yourself, examine the matter, and then you deal with it. So... I pray that you click on part four of the lesson, Judgment According to the Bible.